This video is brought to you by Night Dive Studios. Click the link below to pre-purchase System Shock, available tomorrow on Steam, GOG, and the Epic Store. Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take an in-depth look at the upcoming remake of the survival horror classic, System Shock, and see how it compares to the original game from 1994. For this analysis, both games are being played on the PC, with the graphic settings pushed up to their highest available settings at a native 4K resolution. However, while I do have access to the classic version of the game, I've opted to instead capture footage using the Enhanced Edition version, as this has better compatibility for higher resolutions, improved control options, and other compatibility fixes that make it easier to play. Alright, so to kick this comparison off, let's begin with the game's introductory sequence, that's undergone quite the overhaul since its 94 debut. In the original game, we're introduced to the world of System Shock through a series of animated still images, narrated by the game's antagonistic artificial intelligence, Shodan. We see a hyper-futuristic city on Earth, reminiscent of the one in the film Blade Runner, with lots of tall structures, lights, and flying vehicles. The protagonist is a young, unnamed hacker who is caught breaking into the network of an orbiting space station called Citadel Station. He's then promptly arrested and flown to the station itself, where he's asked by Citadel's Vice President Edward Diego to disable the ethical constraints on Shodan, in exchange for the neural interface that the hacker had sought to obtain initially. It's an ambitious setup for a plot, especially for a game released in 1994. And thanks to plenty of additional audio journals and notes found throughout the course of the actual gameplay, the story is expanded upon further, setting the stage for the immersive sim genre for the decades that followed. In the remake, this entire series of events is expanded upon a great deal, with in-engine rendered sequences allowing players to experience the hacker's arrest firsthand. Players even have a chance to explore the hacker's apartment a little bit, where they can discover things like food, tools, and even an old copy of the original System Shock sitting on a nearby shelf. It adds a lot more to the atmosphere of the experience, embellishing very slightly on the lead protagonist, though it doesn't go overboard either, and even avoids giving the protagonist any type of voice of his own, outside of hand gestures. Dialogue during the deal with Edward is also expanded upon, dropping the old Shodan summary of events in favor of something more direct, which makes the game feel more immersive as a result. Next, let's talk about the design of the game's enemies. Like many first-person shooters in the early 90s, System Shock's enemies are composed entirely of animated sprites, with low-res images cycling through a handful of different stills depending on whether they are attacking the player or not. They're fairly crude designs, though you could still make out very distinctive characteristics that set each and every enemy apart. There's various types of robots, cyborg soldiers, and of course, the humanoid mutants. Each and every one of these enemies returns in the remake, only they're now reimagined as fully rendered 3D models that react more realistically to the environment and the ambient lighting. Some enemies even feature new moves as well, like the serve bot's new spinning arm attack and the repair bot's powerful flamethrower. The enemies also feature unique damage models depending on the weapon that's used. Weaker weapons like the lead pipe will cause the enemies to ragdoll on the ground, while more powerful energy weapons can blow them into pieces. Moving on, let's talk about the game's environments. Remarkably, Night Dive Studios has stayed incredibly faithful to the core layout and design of its maze-like environments. Everything is almost exactly where you remember it being, with the same winding hallways, secret doors, staircases, and even a lot of the enemy placement. But it all looks significantly improved now, thanks to the newer engine and game assets all recreated to match the original game's art style. Take those purple wall panels for example. With the repeated square texture, it was clear that these were intended to give the illusion of depth, as if in a padded hallway, much like the spaceships in several sci-fi films. But now, these squared panels have actual geometry associated with them, jutting out of the wall and adding some really nice depth to the room corners. There are still some flat textured surfaces mixed in here too, though even these seem to have a lot more depth to them thanks to the shading around the squares themselves. But the remake isn't just a one-to-one -one clone either. It expands slightly on these environments, adding in additional detail while carving out previous blank walls to create more practical layouts. 
The initial room, for example, now has countertops in the corners, adjacent to some inlet shelving units and new guardrails. Whereas before, these corners were blocked completely by walls, there were no guardrails, and the shelves were represented by flat textures instead. In the adjacent room, there's now new props in place to expand on the area's main theme, with gurneys, a waiting room bench, and a new sealed office that takes advantage of the previous blocked off space from before. This also greatly helps with actual navigation too, as walls and doors are now easier to distinguish between, as opposed to before where there were many times where I'd miss a door completely, having mistaken it for a wall. Interestingly, the texture resolution in the remake for nearly every asset appears incredibly low quality when viewed up close. But this is a deliberate aesthetic choice, giving each asset in the world this sort of crunchy, retro appearance, echoing the look and feel of old 90s 3D video games. Even still, these pixelated surfaces are still far beyond the capabilities in the original game, as there's more geometric complexity to each object in the world than the old 2D sprites used before. Even the game's many puzzles appear significantly more complex now, as they're being rendered in real time, as opposed to appearing on the heads-up display like before. That being said, it is important to remind you of the context here. The original System Shock did release in 1994, only a few months after the original Doom. So the general complexity and quality of this game's environments were well ahead of its time back then. Many areas even attempt some environmental storytelling, with carefully placed bodies and bloody messages written on the wall, all of which have been brought back in the latest remake. Next, let's talk about the game's lighting design. The System Shock remake's lighting design contributes significantly to its updated appearance, adding considerably more character and atmosphere to each and every room. Volumetric light shafts now pour in from behind this glass panel at the start, and trickle in from the nearby fluorescent ceiling lights as well. Subtle bloom and lens flare effects are also utilized, contributing a great deal to enhancing that iconic sci-fi look as colorful blinking lights from various computer terminals and wall panels glow in the distance. Some surfaces even utilize screen space reflections, making the more metallic surfaces really stand out. The original game's lighting is, of course, not even remotely as advanced, as everything is pre-calculated and baked into the textures themselves. Though it's still impressive to see things like flickering lights and simulated shadowing help contribute to its iconic horror look making encounters with mutants in the hallways just as memorable as they were 30-some years ago. Next, we have the effects. Here, we have quite a few substantial improvements, as the remake likes to incorporate a lot of visual flair to help round out the often drab, industrial-looking hallways. Steam vents and mist will now steadily pour in across the station, which will react to the nearby light probes nicely. Sparks will rain down from damaged wall panels and computers, and fire effects are more pronounced throughout the action, whether it be the repair bot's new flamethrower lighting up the dark hallways, or the small alpha particles attached to a destroyed enemy. One of the most impressive looking sequences though is undoubtedly the redesigned cyberspace that sees players flying around in a surreal geometric space, firing hundreds of particles at abstract cyber enemies. It's a nice aesthetic choice, well beyond the drab look of the old cyberspace sequences, and the way the walls of these sections pulsate and send electrical signals around in a unique path makes for a visually impressive sight. However, I will say that I did experience some significant nausea when playing through these areas, something that I really don't normally experience in standard video games. Increasing the cyberspace mode's FOV seems to have helped slightly, though this is certainly something to keep in mind as these moments are required in order to progress further in the game. Moving on, let's talk about a few of the miscellaneous gameplay changes that are worth noting, starting with the game's movement and general control. This is without a doubt the biggest and most important change that's been made with the remake, as the original game's control scheme has not aged gracefully over the years. In the old versions of System Shock, a lot of the game revolves around interacting with the environment and making use of dozens of control panels surrounding the edge of the screen. These panels can be toggled on and off and even swapped around at any time, and there's several different combinations of controls players need to memorize to access these elements more efficiently. Picking up an item, for example, requires that the player switch the controls off of free luck to mouse control, 
click on the item on the screen, and then drag and drop it into the player's inventory bar at the bottom. And that's the simplified version of the game offered by the Enhanced Edition. In the remake, however, this has been greatly simplified. Players need only press the interact button to pick up an item, which is then automatically added to the newer inventory grid. Looting containers and corpses has also been sped up thanks to a new take all option, no longer requiring players to drag and drop each item over. Though, if you're playing on a controller, it does feel a bit clumsy needing to move a cursor across the screen with the right joystick, and it'd be nice to see an option where you can quickly cycle through each grid space with the left joystick instead, similar to the newer Resident Evil games. Speaking of the inventory, the remake also incorporates another way to dispose of those junk resources, thanks to a new recycling mechanic. If a player breaks down their junk in the inventory, it will now be turned into scrap, which can then be dropped off in a recycler unit in exchange for credits. These credits in turn can then be used at any vending machine to purchase useful resources, including healing snacks, med stims, temporary buffs, and ammunition. It's a great idea, as it not only gives junk items more of a purpose in the game loop, but it also contributes greatly to the immersiveness of the overall experience, bringing System Shock more in line with its later sequel. The weapon handling has been reimagined as well, with a lot of the old weapons being given a brand new look, while also giving them more varied attacks to encourage players to make use of everything at their disposal. The trusty lead pipe, for example, can now be charged up for a heavy attack, allowing players to take down mutants much quicker. But in the original game, the lead pipe only had a single attack animation, and it was incredibly difficult to aim with precision, as the crosshair didn't reliably indicate where the weapon would strike. The firearms are also now properly represented on screen this time, using the previous 2D weapon icons as a base for their design. Players can zoom in the screen slightly with the left trigger, offering slightly more accuracy, and toggling between ammo types, reloading, and unloading are all greatly simplified thanks to more convenient hotkeys, circumventing the need to manually click on items in a menu screen like before. Other changes worth mentioning include expanded animations for basically every interaction in the game world, new weapons like the wrench that no doubt pays homage to System Shock 2, and a top-to-bottom redesign to the game's soundtrack, with improved voice recordings, sound effects, and most noticeable of all, reimagined musical score that scraps the old upbeat techno rock sound for something more ambient and arguably more appropriate for the horror-oriented tone the game seeks to achieve. Finally, let's wrap up with a quick sound comparison. What do you think of the changes made to the game's sound design?
Who are you? The, com the, com the, com the computer notes can be repaired, but you... Who, who are you? My cameras and probes scan your body, but you do not match any employee file. When my cyborgs bring you to an electrified interrogation bench, I will have your secrets. And you will, you, will, you will learn more about pain than you ever wanted to know. Who are you? The computer nodes can be repaired, but you... Who are, are you? M my my cameras and sensors scan your body but you do not but you do not, but, but you do not match any employee file when my c c cyborgs bring you to an electrified interrogation bench i will have your secrets and you, and and you will learn more about pain than you ever wanted to know And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, the System Shock remake is an incredibly faithful top-to-bottom reimagining of the original 1994 classic. Everything players may remember from the original game is here in one shape or form, only now players can take down Shodan from the comfort of a much more modernized control scheme, far more impressive graphics, and more immersive gameplay mechanics. In fact, because it borrows so extensively from the original game, the remake does come off a bit retro on its own, but I do appreciate the fact that the classic game's brutal difficulty has been more or less retained. System Shock really doesn't like to hold your hand, and if you're caught out in the open and get killed, that's pretty much it, and you better hope you have a recent manual save ready to load from. I've also grown to love the weird low-res texture aesthetic as well, as it seems to really suit the game's retro vibe, and gives the remake a unique look all its own. All in all, this is a fantastic remake, staying true to the original game while making it more accessible to modern audiences, and is a great way to finally experience the classic sci-fi adventure that helped inspire countless other immersive sims. But what do you guys think? Are you impressed with the remake, or do you still prefer the original game? Let me know in the comments section. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this posted every week.